Hey guys, welcome back to a special episode of Home Built. And uh, I am no longer in Australia. I am actually here at uh, Wrench headquarters with Mike. And uh, I thought I'd uh, come here, get a few days of thrashing in and try and get the Blasphemy build uh, uh, a little bit closer to the line. I don't think we're going to be getting it finished, but uh, we're going to give it a good hard crack. So uh, First of all, uh, let me just take you around and uh, show you what this is. If you guys don't know about it, I'll uh, I'll put a link to Mike's channel in the description and you can have a look. Let's have a look at the Blasphemy build. So those of you who don't know, this is the Blasphemy build. So uh, Mike has been working on this for the last couple of years, and he's put a, it's a Subaru EZ30 flat six in here. So similar-ish configuration, obviously, to the Porsche engine, but a much, much more affordable swap. And this one in particular is twin turbo. So uh, it's a twin turbo flat six. And this car started out its life as a race car, so it's got a bunch of sort of trick suspension and stuff. It's already got a cage in it, and he spent a lot of time converting this car over. Now, as you can see, it's not finished, but um, I'll just take you around and show you some of the really cool features of this car. So um, it's got the, the race fuel tank, and what he has here, this is all ducting that comes in the front for the custom radiators. So obviously now this is a water-cooled engine and it has custom radiators in the front using uh, a duct underneath the front bar. Uh, he has questionable taste in headlights, but uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll let him go on that one. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's quite a, um, a cool thing. And these wheels are definitely a thing of beauty. So 17 inch, uh, wheels. He's also got the uh, C12 racing brakes like I'm running on the Alpha. It is a very, very cool, cool build. And then over here, what he's probably going to be taking uh, on a road trip later this week when we head up to Ren Sport Reunion is this. This is the Grey Ghost. So this is his uh, 1969 Porsche 911. Uh, it actually has a later model uh, 964 3.6 engine in it so he's not only about the uh, the blasphemous build this is a more original uh well, original style hot rod uh if you like and uh yeah it's a very cool build but he had an issue recently where his uh bonnet flew up on the highway and uh cracked the windscreen wrecked his cowling so he's now got this very very cool extremely lightweight aluminium bonnet to go onto uh, onto the car so uh, hopefully we'll get this out later in the week and have a bit of a look at what it's like all right so the first thing i'm going to try and tackle today is i'm under the uh the blasphemy and uh, the first issue we have is that the shifter cables need to go through the tunnel and they come out right at the bottom down here but uh mike is using a g96 um, transmission which is basically it's a 996 six speed gearbox the uh, the mechanism because the angle of the way that this shifts needs to come down like this whereas these cables are at a lower angle and I have started playing around with bits and pieces and I need to try and come up with a way to see if we can make these cables come through the tunnel rather than going up this way which means that they would have to come out basically uh inside the cabin where the back seat area currently is which is not ideal all right so we have the cables coming through here now and um we've removed the bracket that uh, holds them on so this bracket normally so the bracket normally sits up there and I need to make some mounts to make it sit down lower and try and connect the cables up so that they can then attach to these two points on the gearbox. So let's see what we can do about making an adapter for this bracket.
All right, so this is my bodginess that I've just got to uh, weld together now. So basically what I'm trying to do is, is make an extension from the end of the cable to the linkage on the... Um, on the gearbox and you can sort of see I've got a, uh, a ball end here and another ball um, and I've just joined it I've just joined it together by a, a bolt that I'm going to weld to a, uh, a piece of metal it'll all make sense in a second it just looks a little bit dodgy at the moment but uh, that's because it is yeah nah it's just Yeah, no, nah, it's not going to do it. Come back here, I'll sh have a look and see what, what the movement's like. It's <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. that's no, the solution is, is we can weld, instead of having my dodgy little bracket, we weld a solid bracket onto the original arm. So basically right, right, extending right, off right, of right. there and just move it up to there. Yeah. Oh, your thing broke off, didn't it? Did it? Okay. Yeah, it does. That was that was beautifully welded. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. In the end, my dodgy welds broke on my little test bracket, and it didn't work anyway. The issue is, is that it's there's there's too much slop with these two linkages. The way we're going to fix it, um, which unfortunately I don't have time to do on this trip, and I'm going to have to leave it to Mike. The solution is actually to weld another arm onto this lever of the gearbox, extend it out this way, so then the pivot, instead of being like that, is down here like that, and uh, it will be able to pull in this direction. So hopefully that makes sense, but uh, that at least is a solution that's sorted out, and uh, obviously he needs to make a, uh, a more final bracket to remount where I've uh, just tacked this uh, sort of original bracket into place in the lower spot. So that is that bit, uh, at least in theory, sorted out. All right, guys, well, it's a bit of a change of pace now uh, because now we're getting to the crunch for heading up to Rensport and we're realizing that Mike's green car is just not going to make it. So we're going to spin around and we are going to cram on getting Mike's uh, Grey Ghost ready to go. And there's a couple of things that we need to tackle. So we're gonna just sand this back, get a bit of uh, matte black on there, try and fit the windscreen again, and uh, then we'll uh, see if we can get moving. So let's get some sanding and painting and cramming to get this thing on the road and uh, have a nice trek up to Rensport. So uh, Mike and I have been working on the Grey Ghost. We just uh, sanded down some filler on the sides where where they've gone to come up and dented the cow panel. Uh, smoothed it all out, hit it with a little bit of uh, just rattle can primer filler. It's just getting it to the, sh the event, so this is gonna go a nice matte black. We're almost there, just uh, doing the last little 600 grit sanding, and then we'll paint it matte black and should be good to put the windscreen in. All right, and that bit is done. So uh, you'll probably see the same if you watch Mike's video. Uh, but basically, we just did a quick repair on this. We painted it all satin black, and then we gave it a light scuff with the uh, Scotch Bright just to just to take the sheen off of it because it might have shown some of might have shown more than we wanted to show. Let's put it that way. Put it that way. It's good. Now it looks good. Yeah. Yeah, I feel good about this. It looks very intentional, and. Uh, this is such a late kind of last minute repair just to get this car to rent sport was not the plan, but we have wheels on it now. We're not showing those yet. Uh, we're going to do the windshield right now and then bolt this stuff back on and then finish it up with the, the hood. And it's going to be a, a very functional little hot rod for rent sport. So I'm excited. 
Okay, and next step, as many of you know, uh, my favorite thing is putting in windscreen. So uh, let's give that a go. So I begin by preparing the rubber, going around with WD-40 all the way around the edge. And then I've got a nice thick cord. In this case, I'm using a funnel, but often a spare corking gun tip is a, a very good thing to use and use that to feed the cord in all the way around the rubber, starting and finishing at the bottom of the screen. All right, all right so well, we're ready we're about to put the windscreen. Anyway, we're about... what about? We're... So... so we're about to do the windshield in the Grey Ghost and uh, this guy who apparently can't get enough camera time um, is going to help me, although I'm going to be again doing 98, 99% of it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, we're going to fit the uh, windscreen in now, I think. That was so much better than yours. It's that always was, better. That was, you're polished in the podcast, right? There's some He's terrible. He's mug terrible, in the garage, in somebody else's garage. So we start by lining the windscreen up reasonably evenly. Now you can see we've already got the aluminium trim in the rubber that is done before it gets inserted into the car. That is the way it is supposed to be done by Porsche. Going around, making sure it's nice and square, and then getting somebody inside and somebody outside really helps. And what Mike is doing is pulling the cord and it's basically lifting the rubber over the lip all the way around the, uh, the inside of the uh, windscreen aperture. And uh, I'm sort of going around, a few hard slaps help sort of push the screen uh, in a direction where I want it to go if it's not perfectly centered. and. Uh, yeah, with a bit of uh, coercion, it fits. That actually went very, very smoothly. Touch wood, touch wood, touch wood. Uh, it's actually, uh, yeah, it's gone in quite, quite nicely and sat in, yeah, pretty well first go. I mean, it is the same windshield as before. The only thing is it does have a crack in it, um, but we need it for the show. But the crack, you probably can't see it at the moment, but a crack goes from, from there around to here so it's already it's it's not spreading any further than that because it just goes in one direction so we're not overly worried about it for the show so let's uh get this bonnet on and get it aligned I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, considering that, like, considering that, like, sometimes hood adjustment takes a day. That is on. This is, uh, it lined up not too shabby. We are pretty much ready to rock, but uh, Mike has more plans for this. This actually has, like, a, uh, a bit of a silver paint finish on it. It's uh, not that great. So uh, that is probably going to come off tomorrow and be raw aluminium for the... Uh, for the trip, or as Mike would say, aluminum. Aluminum. I like aluminum better, for the record. Yeah. Aluminum is better than aluminum. <laughs> 100%. All right, so the next thing we're gonna tackle on Mike's car is this aluminum bonnet that he's got. It looks beautiful, but it's got this sort of silver paint over the top of it. This is not actually raw aluminum. But uh, for the show, what we're gonna try and do at least is see how hard it's gonna to be to strip the aluminum off. We actually have to leave in the morning. It's already about uh, half past three in the afternoon. We have to leave first thing in the morning to start driving up. So we just gotta get done whatever we can get done. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna do a bit of a test of the paint stripper on the underside first, just see how difficult it's gonna be and uh, we'll make our decision from there. So let's do it. Well, the test worked reasonably well, so we're going to get stuck in. And the stuff we're using is like the old school, really super toxic, horrible stuff that's now banned everywhere in the world because it's, yeah, it's really horrible stuff. So it means it works really, really well. And uh, hopefully it will make reasonably light work of this. We'll soon find out.
All right, so it's been, what, 30, 40 minutes, enough to go grab a coffee, and uh, we're going to see how this thing did. Oh, oh yeah. damn. That is what you want to see. That is very exciting. What? That is exciting. The bubbles. The scrubbing bubbles. I guess, ready? One, two, three. Oh, that's so satisfying. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's satisfying. So there's a layer of primer. This is the uh, second batch of stripper and it is working a treat. This is looking so nice. This uh, bonnet is a very, very nice quality uh, aluminium piece. I'm very, very impressed with uh, the finish. But it does have, obviously in the manufacturing, they were just uh, tidying up some bits and there's some DA uh, sander marks in different areas. We tried just using some scotch Bright to uh, bring it back, but I think it needs a little bit more. So we're gonna have a little bit of a go, or Mike's gonna have a go with this drum sander and uh, Worried it might be a little bit coarse, but we just we just give it a, a very te quick test first, and if it works well, we can go over the whole thing and just get a nice even grain over the whole aluminium bonnet. So we cleaned up the entire bonnet, and we've gone over it with some. Mike says it's a hood. I say it's a bonnet, um, <laughs> and. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's all been scotch brighted and uh, now it's looking really, really nice. And uh, I mean, it's not, you can tell it's a bare metal piece. It's, you know, it's still got really fine DA scratches and stuff in it, but it's sort of, I think it adds to the authenticity. So uh, that is a cool touch. So now it's time to clean it up, put some wipers on, and I think we're looking pretty good. All right, and the car is all assembled and ready to go. And that is looking very nice. The hood looks so good. The bonnet looks really good. It's an aluminium bonnet, not an aluminum hood. <laughs> anyway, uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this uh, a little bit ramshackle video. It's a bit all over the place, but uh, um, that's what happens in the thrash and getting things done and then switching um, tax at the last minute but we've got the car ready we are going to be heading up to Ren Sport uh, by the time this video comes out you guys will probably it'll, it's going to be over so hopefully I say hello to a bunch of you and um, we're off in the morning heading up so um, look out for the video next week on that alright guys see you next time <laughs>